Hello everyone. Um, today we are gonna move on to chapter two. Uh, but before that, we need to learn something more about chapter one. And we just talked about some um, basic concepts in the operating systems, such as process processes and the uh, address space and the file and the uh, I/O device shell protection and based on those uh, basic concepts we just explained what uh, what we're gonna learn uh, in the chapter uh, from chapter two to chapter six because we need to on this course we need to learn the, um, the the basic principles and principles and the methods to manage cancel of hardware resources and software resource and based on the per concept of per per processes, we are going to learn how to manage the uh, most important uh, component in the computer, I mean, CPU, uh, the, uh, the, the processors. Uh, also, we need to learn how to manage the memory based on the concept of address space, because each process will be allocated uh, his own, its own address space, including uh, the space for the text, I mean, for the program code, uh, for, 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 the, for the instruction for the code, and the, uh, the, the space for the data to be processed, and the uh, space for the stack. Uh, and in that stack, we're gonna uh, record some running information for this process. And we're gonna also, we need to uh, learn how to manage all the uh, 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 resource, uh, software resource, uh, which is uh, the, 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 which form is a file, because uh, all the data will be organized in uh, different files and it, they are all uh, stored in the hard disk or, or SSD or your disk, uh, what, whatever. It's uh, the files have to be uh, organized uh, in the directories, and we have to understand how to uh, implement, uh, how to store those directories and locate the files based on the directories. I mean, based on the task name. Also, we need to learn how to manage the uh, input and output services connected to the computer because the, there are a large variety of I.O. devices, but they all have the similar um, uh, similar uh, software and hardware uh, uh, principles. Uh, we're going to talk uh, discuss the details in the corresponding chapters uh, later, uh, but now we just need to um, just need to take a quick look about the last two sections of the chapter one. Okay, so uh, I just I just mentioned uh, in the uh, in the last class that if you uh, want to uh, create a new process, maybe you should use the uh, use some uh, specific system calls. So what is a system call? It's a uh, it's the interface between user programs and the operating system. If you want the if you want the operating systems to do anything for you, you have to uh, use the system core to let the operating system know what you are gonna do. So basically, uh, maybe some some uh, some of you um, might, uh, might be uh, confused because we just uh, said uh, there are two ways to uh, to tell the operating system what to do. We can um, type some commands in the shell, or we can just simply click the icon, right? But that's the operations uh, launched by the uh, common users. After you type some commands or you just uh, uh, click some icons, uh, finally, it's uh, this operations will uh, cost some, uh, uh, some, some system calls. Uh, finally, it has to be, the signal has to be uh, all the information or your request 
uh, has to be finally uh, 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 how to say has to be finally executed by making some system calls. Uh, for example, if you want to um, play a, a movie, you just icon, you just uh, click the icon of that file, right? I, we, we just talked about this example in the last class. So it means the operating system has to respond to your request, to your click. So it will launch the uh, the the corresponding program uh, from the disk into the memory, but before that, it has to fork, uh, has to has to create create a new process to do uh, to finish to execute all the playing operations for you. So, if the operating system needs to uh, create a new process for you to play that movie file. It needs to make a system call called like uh called uh, uh called as uh, f o r k fork. So that uh you can see uh no matter what you wanna do uh finally it will uh transfer transformed into the system calls. You have to use the system calls to let the operating system uh, understand uh, what you what what's your request what what what, what kind of services uh, you want to uh, you you want the operating system to provide. Uh, so basically, you already understand what the uh, system calls are used for. Uh, we have a lot of uh, different types of uh, system calls. Uh, you can see in Unix-like system or, or Linux-like system, we have uh, system calls for process management. We have, sorry, oh, we need to get back on this slide. We're not finished. We have the fork, have this system call to create a new process. And in the first experiment, as we mentioned before, we're gonna uh, just give you some code. You just need to understand, try to understand and analyze that uh, a, a small segment of code to, uh, to learn how we uh, use fork, use the system call to create some new process. Uh, new processes, and you have to understand the relationship between the uh, created processes. Okay, so this is uh, this is a very important system call uh, if you want to uh, uh, understand the the way operating system uh, work. Uh, so the ne the the next uh, types. The next type of system calls are uh, is used for file management, and we are gonna um, we are, we are gonna use uh, open close. Uh, we just uh, mark them with uh, yellow colors. We are gonna use this four system calls in the fourth experiment. So for now, you just need to understand. We uh, we 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 need to learn how to use these four uh, different system cores to manage to 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 manage uh, the the files in the system. Uh, but as for more details, if you want to learn more details, you you have to wait uh, until we finish. Uh, until we explain the contents in chapter four, and uh, you can uh, try it on the in the fourth experiment. Uh, also, we have some system calls for directory management and some other can uh, kinds of system calls, uh, such as you can use kill to terminate or just kill a process. Uh, as we say, as I said, the process has its own life cycle. It can be created, also it can be terminated. It can be killed by another process. If you want to kill some uh, processes, you need to know some um, important information. Uh, basically, it's the process ID, and you just 
uh, put input that parameter into this system call and you can kill it if you have the permission if you are authorized to kill that process okay so uh, we just need to know there are a uh, lot of uh, system calls to uh, finish different jobs uh, and for if we want to use a system call to uh, finish some job there is a general way to 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 do all the uh, to finish this operation we have uh, basically we have uh, usually we have 11 steps to uh, uh, finish a system call uh, you can see first you need to push uh, here we just in this figure we just take the uh, read if you if we turn, uh, move back to this, move back to this slide, you can see uh, we have this uh, system called read. We can, if you want to read some, read the contents of a certain file stored in the disk, you have to uh, provide the three basic parameters. You have to locate it. Uh, you have to locate where the file you want to read is. And basically, it's just a file descriptor. It's an integer. And how to get this file director, you have to open that fi file first, and then you can read. And when you use the system call open to open a certain file, you'll get a return value. It's called file descriptor it will be stored this return value will be uh, stored in the in this variable called fd means file descriptor this is the first important in uh, the parameter uh, pushed uh, uh, you 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 should provide for this system called read uh, fd just uh, provided where the file is and and bytes just provide provides uh how how many uh bytes of data you want to read from this file and this uh, the last parameter is about where do you want to uh put the data in the memory so uh basically these are uh three uh important parameters if you want to read something uh from the file in the disk into the memory uh so if you want to uh, use the system core to read them into the memory, first you need to push this uh, key parameters uh, onto the stack, onto the, uh, the, the stack of, the, uh, of this process, because uh, there must be a certain process which runs some code to make this system call read, right? So that process we can we, we, we can name it process A maybe. So you have to put push the parameters onto the stack of process A, because each process has its own address space, as we mentioned before. And this you can see it's we just use this user space uh, to uh, represent the address space allocated to process A. First, you need to push the uh, the parameters onto the stack, and then you call read. Here, when you when the application program call read, this read is not the system call read. It's just how to say it's just the uh, library procedure. You, you, if you uh, program in Windows, you have API, a lot of API. Uh, and for any uh, languages, you, you will have, a, uh, there, there is a library uh, which provides a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of uh, interface, uh, application interface for you to uh to to finish some job and you don't need to worry about the details to to uh, uh, uh detail uh, you don't need to worry about the details of the the source code you just need to know how to uh, make a call you just need to transfer uh, some parameters to it and it will return the uh, demanded value to you so uh, here the fourth the fourth step is to just uh, call the library procedure read.
it just has the same usually it just has the same name with the system call uh, but it's not a system call it's just a a, a a library procedure with the same name so the first step is just put uh make this call to the library procedure and then you uh, move on to the next one to put code for read in register of the, the cpu you have to put it uh, put the system code because now in the library procedure uh the the, the code will uh, uh operates the uh will will do the detailed operations on to uh make this system call so it it just puts the uh, usually it just puts the system call number uh in a place uh the operating system different operating system will uh set the uh set a fixed place for the to 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 receive the system call number and this library procedure read it just needs to put the uh, system call number corresponding to the system call read and put that put it in this fixed place and then the operating system uh, the, the operating system will uh, you uh, will, will, will uh, take charge for the uh, rest operations because after the library procedure put the uh, system call number into that fixed place it uh, it the, the it's just uh, it's just it's just uh, gonna execute this uh, spatial instruction called trap uh, we need to remember at any time we want to switch from the user mode to the kernel mode you need to uh the for for the general application pro uh, uh, programs uh, you have to uh, execute this trap instruction to uh, finish this switch from the user mode to the kernel mode if you still if you can still remember the the the, the meaning of the two modes in kernel mode we can uh, run uh, the not we in the kernel mode the cpu can run any instructions but in the um, uh, user mode if uh, if the cpu is set as you kernel uh, as user mode it means only a subset of the instruction set can be explained uh, can be executed so now after the library procedure executes this trap instruction to switch the mode from the user to the kernel mode then the uh, next step will uh, uh, the, the the operating system will uh, will just take charge of the all the uh, uh, the, the subsequent job uh, it has to uh, according it has to launch um, the corresponding code uh, to uh, uh, based on the based on the, the the system core number which is already uh, put into a fixed place and then uh, the, the 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 operating system will just uh, execute the source code in that system core uh, in this example it's just uh, exec executes the instructions in the read uh, system core uh, after it's uh, finished the job to uh, to to load the data to load uh, n bytes data uh, of this file from the disk into the buffer in memory after the operating system uh, finish this job by executing by executing the instructions in the system call read then it can recall uh, uh, return to uh, return to the uh, user space library procedure. So now you can see the uh, the mode is switched from the kernel mode back to user mode. So here, after the operating system uh, finish the, uh, the 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 actual I/O uh, operation here, just read something into buffer, and then it will return to the color <coughs> of the. And here the color is just that 
library procedure, remember? And then the library procedure read will just uh, re uh, return to the uh, user program, to the application program, because uh, this is uh, uh this is process a is uh, is is the right one who launched this read operations so basically you can see the whole uh, uh process or to to finish a system call uh just uh the, the, this process is related to a series of complicated steps and uh, it's related to some mode uh, switch and re also related to some processes re uh, uh, switch, right? Because in the uh, in the in the beginning, uh, the uh, process A is in the CPU, and then it just switch to the uh, library procedure read and then switch to the operating system and uh, the, 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 the management module from the operating system, I mean the dispatch, and then the next instructions run in the CPU are from the uh, system call handler, I mean the system call read. Uh, and then, so, so there are uh, a lot, of, uh, a, a couple of uh, process switch among this uh, the, this complicated st steps, but for us, we just need to understand that uh, you don't you don't need to uh, how to say you don't need to ex explain the whole uh, the the whole process uh, by yourself based on all of this uh, this complicated steps. You just need to understand the basic mode to uh, to finish any system calls, uh, no matter what kinds of system calls are made. Uh, uh, maybe it's a fork, maybe it's read, maybe it's kill. Uh, basically, they are uh, performed this way, uh, shown by the picture. You can, you, you can just uh, understand, uh, you just need to understand the, um, the whole process roughly. Okay, so uh, next, we need to talk something about the metric units. The metric units, uh, we have to explain the difference between the uh, between the the the, the, the manu manufacturer between the industry practice and the and and the, the and the units used in the computer. Because as you know, uh, in computer one kilo means two to the power of 10, right? It's actually if in decimal, it's 1024. But uh, if you buy, uh, uh, you buy uh, some SSD or your disk, you can see it, it's, it's marked as four gigabytes, maybe. But actually, if you check the capacity, it's uh, it's all uh, it, it's the, 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 the real capacity of the uh, your disk is always less than four gigabytes because it's just because when the industry uh, is producing is manufacturing this your disk, it's just take one kilo as ten to three, but to the power of three. But uh, when the computer to when the computer calculates the capacity of a uh, storage uh, of a uh, of the storage medium, it's just take one kilo as two to the power of 10. So it's different. You have to understand the difference. And on this course, of course, we just take one kilo as two to the power of 10. Uh, this is very important because we need to, uh, we need to uh, uh, grasp the method to transfer, uh, to, to, to transfer the, uh, the, 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 the address, uh, how to say, to transfer the uh, logic address to the into the physical address for each process. We are gonna learn the the concrete uh, method in chapter three, uh, and you have to 
uh, notes that one kilo means two to the power of uh, ten. Otherwise, you're gonna get you, you're gonna get the wrong result. Cause if you just take one kilo as one thousand, the result will be totally different from the uh, from the right answer. Uh, also, you can check the uh, prefix for different units, such as um, uh, milli, micro, micro, nano. Usually, uh, you have to know that the uh, uh, clock cycle uh, or a CPU cycle is calculated uh, by nanoseconds maybe uh, a few nanoseconds or just one nanosecond. So you have to understand this uh, basic knowledge. Also, uh, the kilo mega, we have the kilo mega giga tero piro, uh, peter and, uh, and even more for the capacity of the storage. So um, that's all you need to know about this simple metric units table and that's all also that's all for the first chapter in the first chapter we just need you to understand the two different cpu modes and the time and time multiplexing uh, what is time multiplexing and what is space multiplexing uh, this in this this you have to un know the answer to this question also, you need to uh, understand the concept about interrupt, because a lot of things, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, how to say, the execution of multiple processes uh, in, the com in the same computer uh, are, uh, are based on the interrupt, because interrupt, they need to switch uh, the CPU need to switch among this uh, among these multiple processes. You have to understand the concept concept of the interrupt, also the concept about the system calls, which are uh, uh, provided by a certain operating system. And each each uh, operating system will provide different system calls. Usually they have the same uh, interface, they have the same name, uh, the same parameters, but uh, inside the different system calls from different operating systems, uh, they can have different uh, uh, implementation details. I mean, maybe the code are different. Uh, uh, in the chapter two, we're gonna uh, discuss some system calls in Unix like system and Windows series uh, systems. You can see maybe sometimes they, they don't even have the same name. Of course, they have a different code and sometimes they don't even have the same name and, and uh, they have different mechanism to, uh, to make the system calls. Also, uh, we just uh, take a brief review about some basic concepts related to the operating system, such as processes, the address space, and the, the path name, the, uh, uh, etc. So that's all about the first chapter. And then we're going to move on to the second chapter of this, of this textbook. So you can see, uh, actually, we uh, just uh, uh, list these five uh, sections here. And uh, among these five sections, you can see uh, uh, some stop sections are uh, deleted from the uh, PowerPoint. We just focus on the uh, basic principles about the process uh, about the cpu management actually it's just about the processes management uh, in these five sections the in this among these five sections you just 
uh, you, I, I, I suggest you uh, pay more attention on the first one to understand the concept of the processes and the, the three or five or seven different states of, of a process. And pay, uh, you need to, uh, the most important part is about the four section scheduling because we know uh, CPU, this, the, this, this processor, is used to run some instructions. Everything is about the uh, instructions, uh, is about the execution of some instructions. So uh, which process can uh, use the CPU for uh, uh, how long time? It's uh, for maybe for uh, uh, 10, uh, for, for, for uh, dozens of uh, nanoseconds. So that's the key issue about the scheduling. The uh, scheduling algorithm needs to uh, solve this issue to decide which process can be the, uh, can, can get into the CPU as the next one to, and, and, and the scheduling algorithm also needs to decide how long the, uh, this process can use CPU. Uh, so these are the two most important parts in chapter two. Also, um, there is one more important part. It's about uh, the classic IPC programs. So IPC, pro what's IPC? IPC means interprocess communication. Uh, and for this part, in my opinion, it's it may be the most difficult part on this course because you need to use, uh, after you learn this part, you need to, uh, 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 you need to grasp the way to use P and V operations to, uh, to, to control the synchronization among multiple processes and, uh, uh, a lot of students just uh, told me that they, they, it's hard, it's too hard for them to understand this part. So maybe I am gonna, uh, I'm gonna put more, spend more time on the uh, explanation of section, uh, of, of section three and section five. Uh, but before that, you just need to uh, understand that the, uh, Section one and section four, they are very important and they are very easy for you to understand and grasp. So uh, in the quiz, uh, in, in the quiz of this uh, minister, you, you can check that we, uh, we, 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 uh, we're gonna have some, uh, at least two or three uh, comprehensive problems about in, in uh, relevant to this chapter. So this chapter is, uh, how to say, it takes just uh, uh, a high proportion in the, in the quiz and in the school. I hope you can uh, put more attention, pay more attention to the learning of this chapter. So first let's just, uh, take a close look to this concept, process. So first we just uh, need to learn the process model. Actually in this, in this part, we, we just give you the definition of the process and understand the way multiple process uh, uh, runs in the, uh, during the same period. Uh, just understand the basic way. Uh, and the, as I introduced, uh, more attention should be paid to this part, process states. Uh, beside, except for this section, you just need to understand there are different uh, cases or events to, uh, to create a process or terminate. I mean, kill a process, and you uh, you just need to understand. Uh, in some operating systems, there are uh, a, a clear process hierarchy, but some in some 
other operating systems, there is no such concept. Also, you need to understand the, uh, the basic uh, st spatial structure uh, for the process implementation. We need to, uh, we, we, we are gonna introduce some, uh, some, some items in the process controller block, which is the spatial structure for the process implementation. And in this section, in this part, you, you, you just need to, uh, understand there are different information in PCB and it's enough. Also the, uh, this last part, it's not so important either. So you can see a uh, one, uh, part one, part five and part six, uh, are relevant, uh, are, are, are comparatively more important. Now let's move on to the first part. Uh, so as we, uh, mentioned in the last class, uh, you can view the process as a, uh, you can roughly view the process as a program in execution, right? So here we just define a process as an instance of an, it's an instance of an executing program. It means based on, uh, uh, based on exactly the same program stored in the disk, you can create two or more processes and each process will be an instance of that uh, that same program so process is a dynamic concept with life cycle i just mentioned this a lot of times a process can be created and be terminated uh, between the time it is created and the time it is uh, terminated, it's this process is life cycle. And during the life cycle, the process may might might transfer between might switch among a three or five or seven basic states. Uh, so basically. Um, we, we just know that, uh, the mother operating system needs to handle the keys that more than one. Usually we have dozens of, uh, and sometimes maybe over 100 processes in the same computer. So, uh, we just suppose there is only one CPU and this CPU has only one core. So that's a basic assumption for the whole, whole course you have to understand in the uh, in, in the following chapters we just assume uh, all the uh, all uh, the, 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 there is only one cpu that means at any instant at any moment uh, there is only one instruction is executed in this unix cpu of the computer so you need to check this figure to understand uh, how uh, multiple processes, uh, 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 the, how, how multiple processes here in this figure is just four processes. Uh, how these four processes uh, execute their instructions during the same time. Uh, in the during this same time but if you check it carefully you can see at any moment there is only one instruction from a certain process is in the cpu we have four processes in the system and this is uh you as as, as time goes by uh maybe first is process a in CPU and then process B will use the uses CPU to run some codes and then C and D. This is just a very simple illustration about the uh, multiple uh, programming uh, about the uh, uh, about the the, the par parallelly executed uh, processes. Uh, actually. Uh, you can check here at this instant. Actually, there is some 
other some uh, some some other instructions uh, neither from process c uh, nor from process d they they are, they are from the operating system because uh, between uh, the switch if the cpu needs to switch from the last process to the next process uh, the the operating system needs to uh, usually the operating system needs to uh, run some instructions to handle the the the, the uh, handle some um, basic operations such as to protect the states of the uh, last uh, last process and get ready for the uh, for the next uh, process to get in the CPU. So uh, you have to understand there actually there is another process usually it's from the operating system and it will execute some instructions to handle the switch between the last process and the next process uh, so you can you can see if um if if you take the time slot of this uh, about the switch if you uh, if the operating system um, spent more time on the switch then the uh, you the 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 the, the effect the effection of these four processes will be very low because it just uh, it, they just waste a lot of time uh, on, on the switch behaviors so uh, this is the uh, the tough issue to solve for the operating system uh, to keep the balance between the uh, between the fairness and the and and the the uh, effect and the infection because uh, how to say um, maybe we I I shouldn't uh, <laughs> explain too much here because we're gonna uh, explain about this we're gonna discuss it in the in, in the scheduling part here maybe you just need to understand the, the the processes they just take turns to use the cpu and that's the that, that's the way how multiple processes uh, share uh, the cpu in a time multiplexing way okay so now let's move on to the next slide about the uh, different cases to create a process Basically, there are four principal events leading to uh, process creation. Uh, you can see we just list them, list them here. Uh, we're gonna uh, give you some more details about the four events or four cases. So the first one is about system initialization. It means uh, as long as you uh, turn on the computer as long as the operating system is launched in the computer it will initial some uh, processes uh, to uh, uh, how to say to 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 uh, do some basic jobs for the whole uh, systems um, and you can see we have some foreground processes and have we have some background processes background processes are those processes that uh, interact with users and perform work for them uh, if you uh, recall the the interface gui of windows or if you have uh, ever tried to use the shell from linux uh, that is a, a a foreground process and it can uh, take your uh, uh, take your action as a input as an input uh, to uh, send to the operating system to uh, launch some new program to be executed in the computer and there are also some background processes uh, it means you usually uh, you usually don't see uh, you, you you don't uh, in most cases, you don't see their interfaces on the screen because they just run in the background. Uh, but if there are some events that need uh, that that happens, and uh, if there are some events 
which are required uh, for you to handle. Uh, exa for example, if it's the, if there's demo uh, for the uh, for, for for the email, uh, just check uh, if if the demo just checked some new emails are coming, it will prompt out a dialog box on the screen, right? It will uh, 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 give you a, a remind remind that, uh, that 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 there are some new emails. So uh, as long as the operating system is is launched in the op computer, it will initial these uh, processes, and they just uh, stay in the memory the whole time uh, as long as the computer is on. Uh, so this is the first case, uh, and some processes are created by a running process. And here, this running process uh, uh, is usually a certain, uh, a, a certain process related to uh, a program. For example, if you want to uh, download a movie from the internet, uh, and this process, when during the uh, implementation of this operation, it might uh, create two uh, processes to help it finish the uh, downloading job. Uh, so this is the second event. This uh, this pro some processes can be created by a running process, and maybe you uh, the the most familiar way for you to understand is uh, uh, is the third one that that means it a user can request to create a new process and this example we just talked about it a lot of times when you want to watch a movie you just click double click the icon on that movie file right and this is a request to create a new process, right? Uh, of course, you can uh, click on some items uh, to create some processes, and also you can just type a comment in the shell to create some process, some new processes. And we're gonna uh, try to uh, uh, try to grasp the, the way to uh, to type some commands in the share of the Ubuntu, the uh, 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 a special version of Linux. In the first experiment, you're gonna try some commands in that shell, and maybe you uh, learn more about this kind of uh, the third kind of, of process creation, and the last process creation. Uh, I believe mm, most of you have no idea about this because uh, most of us uh, don't have the chance to uh, use the batch systems. Uh, actually, the batch systems just, uh, if you recall the generation, uh, generation of computers, the generation of computer uh, of uh, operating system, you can know, uh, you can recall that the a batch system just emerged uh, in the second generation, and after that, it just uh, it, it has evolved uh, uh, decades of years, uh, and batch systems are very uh, uh, suitable for the uh, for the transactions for for some for the transactions in in, in bank or in insurance com company. Uh, they usually needs to, uh, uh, how to say, needs to finish some batch jobs. Uh, and they usually don't need a lot of interaction. Uh, they just need to run the, uh, run the instructions one after another. Uh, there is little interaction among the, uh, between the users and the machine. Uh, so for this kind of uh, batch systems, uh, we the users just uh, submit. Here the users, uh, it's not the common users as you 
uh, as the as the uh, personal users, they, they they might are the employee from the uh, big company. So first, the the employee is needs to submit uh, batch jobs, uh, a, a couple of or a few of batch jobs to the system. So there are a lot of jobs, uh, uh, in the queue to. Uh, in the queue connected to the system and they need to wait until the uh, operating system decides to uh, to load them from the uh, from the queue into the memory they uh, in, in in the beginning uh, after the uh, users after the employees submit the batch jobs they are just uh, out of the memory only when the Operating system needs to, uh, how to say, needs to execute it. Then this job can be loaded in, loaded into the memory. And at that moment, when this job in the disk in the queuing, uh, which might be stored in the disk or in the spooling system, uh, at that moment, the this job is chosen. Uh, by the operating system to get into the memory to start the execution the at this time this operating system will just create a new process for this job so basically there are four different events different type of events or you can see if there are four cases to uh, uh to to create a process uh basically they they just all uh, all the processes are created by a certain process, right? Uh, only when that process, or, or maybe uh, no matter it's a, a system process or it's a, a, a application, it's a it's a user process uh, running uh, uh, run, run, running some uh, codes from the application programs. Uh, no matter it's a system process or it's a, it's a user process, uh, there must be a specific process which launch the uh, operation to create a process. And as we said, uh, in Unix, we can, the, the, the pro if a process needs to create a new process, uh, it needs to make this uh, system call, make the fork, make make this system calls uh, named as fork and if you are in windows then you need to uh, make a system call on create process and they have uh, the, the two different uh, system calls uh, they they have light uh, slight difference on the way to create a new process in unix like systems uh the this this system call it's just responsible uh to create a new process and uh it, it, uh, and if this person this child process wants to uh execute some uh, specific code to run, uh, to, to finish its own job, it's, uh, it, it needs to uh, execute another system call. Uh, and if you are interested in this part, you can check the textbook or you can search on internet. Uh, there are uh, a, a few of system calls for the child process to, to make, to execute. Uh, and uh, which are uh, uh, used for different scenarios. Uh, for the so in Unix-like systems, we if you want to create a process, of course you need to create this process to do some job, right? You have to uh, finish this job in two steps. First, you create a first a child process by call by calling fork and then the, in the second step you need to uh, make another call uh, like execute uh, to run a new program which just uh, is uh, corresponding to the uh, specific 
uh, behaviors that the child process is gonna do. Uh, but in Windows, uh, this system calls just this system call just bind combine the two steps in Unix like system together. So uh, these are the uh, main difference between the Unix and Windows. Uh, of course, if you have the chance to uh, check their uh, the, the the inner code in the the code inside of this. Uh, of this two different system calls, uh, you'll see a lot of difference. But I I don't think uh, you have you you can find the uh, source code of the create process. But uh, of course the there is the there are the source codes for for fork right. If you are interested in the uh, implementation, you can uh, check them. But in in this class, in uh, our course, we just uh, focus on the principles and theory and methods. We don't uh, explain uh, more about, uh, we, we don't explain, discuss much about the code, about the, the, the concrete implementation. So uh, that's all about process creation. And then we should move on to the process, the, the, uh, the the last uh, uh, slot of the uh, the process life cycle. Uh, sometimes we need we we need to terminate the process. No matter it it uh, uh, no matter uh, the process wants want, wants to be terminated or not. So we just uh, there are. Also, there are four uh, different types to terminate a process. Uh, we just divide them into two uh, types, uh, uh, into two cases. The first one is to uh, volunt The first one is about the voluntary termination. Uh, it means um, if if the process in the first case. Uh, if this process just uh, executes all the instructions, and if this process already finishes its job, then it can uh, make a system call like exit, exit in Unix or exit process in Windows. Uh, in the, the last uh, step for those processes is to just make this system call uh, and to terminate itself uh, voluntarily. But uh, sometimes during the execution of a process, uh, some errors might happen. And for this error, error except, uh, it means this process can, uh, usually this process uh, can expect there is uh, such a error. It, it, it maybe in the code it has some uh, uh, has some segments about this error uh, about how to handle this kind of errors and when this error actually happens then the uh, process just run those instructions about the error handling and just uh, uh, finish uh, and just uh, terminate the execution of itself so. The second, in the second case, the process can uh, usually can uh, expect uh, the happening of this error, and it just uh, it, 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 it can just show. Sometimes it will show you uh, warning uh, messages, and uh, and finally uh, killed itself or, or terminate itself. So these are two cases about the voluntary termination but sometimes there are some um, events that the uh, process have have uh, didn't expect for example if uh, if the uh, the instruction uh, needs to uh, divide a number by zero then it's just uh, will 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 and this instruction will be uh, terminated the the whole process will be terminated right so you can see in this 
uh, involuntary termination, uh, it's often it's usually caused by uh, by some bugs. Uh, so the process in this case, the process doesn't want to terminate itself, but it doesn't have the choice. Uh, the system won't let you continue your execution. And the last case to terminate a process is the uh, uh, is it, it, it can uh, uh, is a possibility that it can be killed by another process. So it means no matter this process want to exit or not, this process might be killed or terminated by another process which has the permission, which has the uh, the, the authorization to 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 kill it. So you can see the uh, name to terminate a certain process is is different in Unix and when, Windows. But usually, I don't think we uh, most of us we 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 don't uh, we don't have the chance. Maybe we don't have the chance to uh, make this system course. We just need to understand there are uh, uh, there are the uh, these two uh, different system cores for different operating system uh, to be used when a certain process needs to uh, kill another one. And actually in the Unix, sometimes uh, in, in, in some Unix or Linux-like systems, they allow the, the process to, uh, to kill its child process. And sometimes it, they, they just, uh, they, they might even require a process needs to kill its uh, child process if the, uh, before this process except. So it, it means in this operating system, if uh, process A wants to uh, exit, exit the system, wants to terminate itself, it has to uh, uh, terminate its child process. And also uh, its child process has to terminate uh, the child process, I, I mean the grandchildren uh, process, right? So all, all in this operating system, a process can be killed or can be terminated only when all the uh, descendants of this process are killed. Uh, so that's, uh, you, you just uh, uh, need to be aware of this uh, the, the, this possibility, uh, this case, but you don't, um, you you don't need to. Uh, I don't think you need to pay more attention on the detail. So you just need to understand there are four even four cases to create and to or to terminate a process. Uh, that's enough. Okay, so now let's move on to the next part about the hierarchies. Uh, as we uh, if we recall the uh, the, the process uh, concepts we discussed in the last case, in the last case, uh, we can see there is a figure about a process tree, right? It's it's in the Unix or Linux-like systems, uh, because in this kind of operating systems, uh, nearly all the processes, all the processes in the whole system belong to a single tree. And the init is the root. The init is a special process. If you want to know more about this process, you can check it on the internet. So all the processes belong uh, are the in are the descendants of this init process. And all the processes they are just organized in a single in in, in one process tree in Unix or Linux systems. Uh, but in Windows, uh, the processes are all equal. They don't, they are not organized in any hierarchy, in any organizations, all processes are equal. So if 
a process needs to terminate another process, it has to use a special token uh, to 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 do this. Uh, and uh, first, the, 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 this this process needs to uh, need, needs to uh, know the information about the uh, about the process. Uh, it can it, it wants to terminate. I mean the the PID it has to use PID to kill and kill the process with the, with this same PID. Uh, uh, so you just need to uh, you just need to be aware that two different ways to organize the uh, all the processes in different uh, operating systems. So now. Let's just move on to the important part of this class, the process states. Uh, actually, there are uh, five basic states. Besides running, ready, and blocked, we have new and accept, exit uh, these two basic states because we just talked about the uh, process creation and process termination. So when the operating system or some uh, some uh, uh, application program, uh, some some application uh, processes, they want to create a new process. Uh, it needs uh, it needs to uh, uh, just uh, make this system call. Uh, if you are in Unix or Linux like system, you just uh, call fork. And after you call fork, after the instructions of the fork it are, are all executed, this new process will be created. And at this moment, the new created process is in the new state. In the new states, this process maybe they, they don't have uh, 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 a lot of relevant. Uh, they, they don't have uh, much relevant information uh, as uh, as other uh, running processes. Because uh, uh, in the beginning of the process creation, uh, nothing, uh, no files relevant to the process are opened and no instructions relevant to this process are executed. So basically it's um, uh, uh, pretty, uh, it, it's, it's a brand new state for this pr process. So that's the first state for each process to be created. It's a new, it's called a new state. Also, if you want to uh, terminate a process, you, uh, you need to uh, you, you need to uh, uh, make this process return all the resources that allocated to uh, to the to to it. So uh, it takes time to finish all the jobs to return the. Uh, the, the allocated resources to the operating system. So it needs a time period to finish all this job. And during this period, the, 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 the process is in the exit state. So the, in the beginning, the process is in the new state. And at the end of its life cycle, the process is in the exit state. And besides that, during the execution of this process, it might uh, uh, switch a lot of times among these three most basic uh, states called running, ready, and blocked. So what's running state? Running state means this process is using the CPU at that uh, at, at this moment at this instant it means at this moment uh this process it has some instructions in the cpu to be executed and the cpu is already allocated to this process 
then the process is in the running state. And if the uh, if this process is not in CPU, it's in memory. But if you uh, if the operating system allocates the uh, the CPU to this process, then the process can get into CPU immediately and run some next instructions. Then the state for this process is called ready. But some processes, maybe they are in such a state, even though you allocate the CPU to this kind of uh, this, uh, processes, they can't get into the CPU to run some execution because they are waiting for some events to happen. So if some processes are in such a state, it's called blocked processes. So these are three basic states about each process might, uh, might uh, experience. Uh, usually, uh, during the life cycle of a process, it will just repeatedly uh, switch among these three basic states. And after all the instructions are executed, this process can move on to the final, uh, the, the last state called exit. Uh, also, uh, if you uh, want to know something about the seven basic states, uh, you have to uh, re, uh, uh, you have to understand this suspend concept. So suspend means this um this process actually uh some uh how to say uh some unnecessary or or the instructions needs to be executed are not in memory they are in uh in, in the hard disk so in this case this process is suspended it doesn't have the opportunity to be chosen by the scheduling algorithm to 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 get in the CPU. So if a process is suspended, it can uh, have it, 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 it it's divided into uh, two different cases. Maybe this process is uh, sus uh, is suspend ready or it's suspend blocked. So it means. You, you just need to understand this this word suspend just means uh the main part of the process is not in the memory they are in the hard disk so it 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 means that if you want to uh continue if you want to restart this process if you want to uh execute some instructions for uh, for uh, exec uh, execution some instructions from a process in a suspend uh, state, you need to, uh, the operating system needs to just load the main part of this process from the disk into the memory. And then it can switch from the suspend state to ready or blocked. and the schedule the scheduler i mean the scheduling algorithm only choose one process from all the processes in the ready state so uh, you can see it's very important for you to understand the different basic states of the of uh, of each process so these are the definition of the three basic or, or even five or seven basic states. Uh, now let's to let's uh, check the switch between different states together. Uh, so you can see there are four possible switch between among these three states. Uh, you can uh, you, you you can think uh, about uh, about this issue about why. There is no uh, switch from uh, from the block to the running or from the ready to the blocked. 
Uh, so now let's just check the four possible uh, switch between the uh, among these three states. So uh, this this transition one transition one occur, occurs uh, when only when the uh, not only when uh, if the operating system this uh, discovers that uh, continue can uh, that a process cannot continue right now the process can execute a system called pause to get into blocked states so if this cpu or if this process in cpu cannot keep executing any more ex uh, instructions it means uh, it, it, it's no need uh, this process uh, this process needs to be moved out from the cpu then this pro the, then this process need, will uh, uh, its states will switch from running to the blocked so the transition one occurs only when the uh, uh when the when the uh, operating system discovers that this process cannot continue right now and there are a uh, lot of cases that the process cannot continue its execution for example uh, if uh, uh, if if this process uh, you, you imagine this process is the uh, explorer right if you want to search something on internet you need to type the address uh, into uh, tap 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 the address of the website, right? And if you you just uh you just get interrupt by something else, if you need to uh answer a call, so you just leave the computer physically. So it means this uh this explorer uh it's just it, it can't get the uh input for a long time so at this time the maybe the the process will be uh will will be moved out from the cpu because it it expects to get uh get some input immediately but there is no input for this process then this process will uh will will switch from the running state to the block that and when this process can um, can have have the uh, chance to get back into the cpu it has to first uh transfer uh, 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 first switched from the blocked states uh, to the ready state uh, so when does this process can switch the states from block to the ready only when the uh, event that the process is waiting for actually happens it means when you uh when you uh, finish answering the call when you sit back in front of the computer when you actually uh, input the whole uh, uh the, the uh, address of the website when you press the enter key on the keyboard then the process just gets what they what, what it needs it has the information to be processed it, it get uh, it, it just gets the input it requires then this uh, process will uh, just uh, move on to the next state move on to ready from the uh, block state so this is uh, uh, about the first transition uh, we just uh, focus back on this transition uh, when the operating system discovers that this process in cpu cannot continue then it will get blocked sometimes the uh, the, the the process will won't be blocked by the operating system so sometimes the process will block itself you know what i mean and so the operating system can uh, block the uh, process or the process can the user process can block itself um 
So that's basically about the first transition. And let's check the uh, second one and the third and the third one. Uh, transition two and three, they are caused by the process scheduler. As we said, the scheduler means some a scheduling program to decide which process in the ready states can get the CPU as the next one to uh, run its instructions. So uh, transition two, uh, a transition transition two occurs when the process scheduler decides that the running process has run long enough and it's time to let another process have some CPU time. So obviously transition two occurs when the scheduler decide to choose another another process to replace the pre to replace the process uh, the last process in CPU to use CPU for a while. At this time, uh, the last process in the CPU will transfer from uh, will will switch from the running state uh, into the ready uh, state. Cause uh, why why at this moment that process is not set as blocked uh, state? Why is this why uh, is this process uh, set as ready state but not blocked? Uh, state when the scheduler uh, forced the, the this process uh, move out from the CPU. You can think about it. It's just because for this process, it the, the only resource it needs, the only thing it needs is the CPU. It means next time, as long as the scheduler decides to uh, allocate CPU to it again, this process can get into CPU immediately and to and, and run some next uh, run, run the next instruction, right? Because this process, it's not waiting for something. It's not like the process in the blocked uh, state. The processes in blocked states, they are waiting for some events to happen. Sometimes it's some uh, it, it's some I O uh, information or some some other events or some signals uh, uh, sent by another relevant process. Um, anyway, the processes in the black block state they are all waiting for a certain event to happen. So it's no use to allocate the CPU for uh, to them because they uh, they are waiting for another event, but not the resource of CPU. Uh, so uh, let's uh, come back to this transition between running and ready state. Okay, so transition to uh, occurs when the scheduler decides that this last process in CPU needs to uh, get out of CPU and let another uh, process to use the CPU for a while. Then this transition two happens, and when the uh, process. Uh, when a certain process in in ready state is chosen by the scheduler to uh, to to be allocated the, uh, uh, the, the 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 CPU, then it means this process can can do the opposite transition from ready to running. Uh, so now we just need to explain the last uh, transition among these three state. Uh, process states, right? Actually, I just mentioned it, uh, mentioned a, a, a possible case uh, a few minutes ago. Now let's just check, check, check more details. Transition four occurs uh, 
occurs when the external event for which a process was waiting, right? So I just emphasized the process, the processes in the block state, they are all waiting for a certain event. And when this event happens, they don't need to wait for any wait, wait for it anymore. The 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 event they are waiting for is already happened. Then it can just switch from the blocked uh transit a uh, blocked state to ready state. And here you 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 may think more about how does the operating system know that the uh, that this specific event uh, which process A is waiting for is actually happen actually happened how how does the operating system know about the happening of the uh, of the event of this eternal event and how and then the operating system can uh, run some instructions to set the uh, states of the process from the blocked to the ready, right? How does the operating system know? Maybe some students have the answer, have already or already have the answers. Uh, we just mentioned the, it a lot. We just mentioned this concept a lot, we mentioned this answer a lot. It's because of interrupt, interrupt. Interrupt means what? Interrupt is the signal to send to the operating system that there is something, there is a certain event happening. So the when the uh, specific event happens, it usually can uh, emit it, uh, emitted uh, a signal called interrupt to the operating system. And when the operating system checked this interrupt and found that, oh, that's the signal showing this specific event which is weighted by a certain process, maybe process A, uh, now it actually happens. So the operating system can uh, just uh, do some operations on the uh, on the transition about the uh, of the process A, right? So um, uh, basically, these are the uh, the 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 uh, basic principles uh, among uh, the basic transition uh, happening among these three uh, basic states. Uh, but I hope you can think more about them uh, based on the uh, explained concepts or all the all the uh, uh, theories we just mentioned. Okay, so uh, uh, you can check more details about the transitions uh, in the textbook after the class. Uh, so uh, I, I just emphasized this part, so they are very important. Uh, so uh, in, in, the, in the quiz, I, I, I guess I'm, I, I'm gonna set, some, say, set one or two uh, questions about this process state. So you, you, you just note that it's important. And we have, uh, I remember I we have in, in the assignments of this chapter uh, we have a question about the process uh, uh, about the process state transitions and you can uh, finish them after the chapter. Uh, when as as we uh, saying about the, the 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 assignments, you just need to know after we finish the chapter two. Uh, you are supposed to, you, you should hand in the assignments uh, before the, let me see, uh, how to say, after, okay, after, if we uh, end this chapter 
in this class, then it means the uh, the you you need to submit your assignments about this chapter in before the next class. Okay, so you I, I'm gonna uh, upload this PowerPoint in the WeChat group after the class, and you can check the assignments in advance. Uh, if uh, you you can finish them in advance, uh, and after, and I'll gonna I, I'll let you know uh, when. Uh, is a deadline for the first assignment. Uh, okay, so now let's just move on to the process implementation. Um, so the process implementation we just said, it's all about this spatial data structure. Uh, actually, it's just, uh, uh, it's just a structure called PCB, process controller block. And in operating system, it usually maintains a table. And this table is called process table. This table has a multiple entry. If there are 100 processes in the uh, system, then there are 100 entry in this process table. It means each process needs to, uh, the operating system needs to maintain uh, uh, one PCB for each process, and this spatial spatial structure called PCB it contains all the important information about this process. You can check the uh, detail uh, in this table in, in this figure in this table. So in uh process in, in this process controller block you need to memorize you need to memorize this term which is which is a very essential uh concept or term in this uh, in, in, in operating system also in the computer science you need to understand what pcb stands for and what fcb stands for it means process controller block so in process controller block, we said it just contains all the, all the important information, such as the contents of the uh, registers, the general registers. If you recall the uh, contents we just mentioned in chapter, uh, in section, uh, in, in section three of chapter one, uh, when we uh, review the computer hardware. We said in the CPU there are a group of registers, right? The general registers are used to uh, store the uh, data to be processed, used to uh, store the data, the result. So the content of those general registers are stored in are stored in the uh, PCB for each process because you know the cpu is shared by all the process processes in the system uh in different time so it means uh multiple processes needs to take turn to your cpu cpu has only one set of uh, one group of registers no matter it's a uh, general register or the or, or some uh, register used to control the the execution so when the switch between the last process and the next process happens you have to store all the content in the registers of cpu into this process controller block and after that, when this process is chosen by the scheduler to continue its execution in CPU, it can just re recover all the content in the registers by simply load this uh, content in the PCB from memory into CPU, into the registers in, in CPU, right? You have to understand this important step. Uh, we, when the 
process leaves CPU it needs to uh, store some important information back to its PCB. And before the process get into CPU to run some, to continue run uh, the next uh, instruction, the, 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 the uh, content in PCB needs to be loaded back into the registers of CPU to, re to, to get ready to, to uh, do the recovery for the uh, restart of the process, right? Uh, so you can check all, uh, as we said, as I said, there are a lot of useful, necessary, important information to be recorded. Uh, for example, the program counter, it means uh, which instruction you are executing when you are replaced by another CPU or by another process. You have to record that number, right? The last time when you just finished, uh, maybe, uh, let me say, uh, 1000 instruction, uh, and next time when you get back into CPU, you need to start from 1001, right? You need to uh, continue uh, executing the instruction 1001. Uh, so also you can check the uh, other info, in, important information in the content in the PSW, in the stack pointer, and also you can check there are uh, some PID. It's very important to uh, identify the process. And uh, also it has some uh, information about the uh, relevant files opened by the by this process. And also it has information about the UID and GID, and we just uh, mentioned this uh, uh, in the last class. It's, uh, it's also important too. So um, I hope you can check this table uh, carefully after the class, because it just contains a lot of useful information. And if you can, uh, figure out each term in this term in this table. I I guess I I believe you just control a, a, a control a lot of useful content for this course. So that's all for today's class. Uh, let's see next. Oh no, yes, the day after tom tomorrow. Yeah. The next class will be the on the Wednesday, right? So that's all for today. Thank you. Uh, can you still hear me, right? Uh, you can check the first uh, few, first a couple of slides in the chapter one. Uh, you, cause the textbook is model operating system. Also, you can check the, I guess the title is, uh, Operating system concepts, which are we, that book is also very famous in the field, and I think I just list it in the in the PowerPoint of uh, chapter one. Hold on, I I can check it right now. Actually, I I just. Uh, suggest you to check more information on internet because it's just uh, the the book the the book is more how to say systematic uh, it can um, provide you provides you the full um, more com details but maybe it's not it, it cannot provide you, uh, it's hardly to provide you the, the, the most uh, newest technology, the, the newest technologies or the, the theory. So I guess maybe you should. Hold on, I just found it. Uh, Oh, I can't. 
Oh, sorry. I just made a mistake. Uh, if you check this book, I guess there is a ebook e ebook for this book too. I I guess. Because something, actually something in the both books, they are, how to say, uh, kind of outdated, right? Because uh, uh, for, for the operating systems, uh, someone may put, pay more attention on um, maybe for uh, Android or OIS, or iOS. There is little, actual, uh, at least on this course, we won't talk about the, the, the smartphone operating systems. Okay, that's all for today. Uh, if you have any more questions, you can just uh, contact me in the WeChat group.